Welcome to the Drag Force Computational Physics style, where we find very, very small changes in time and see how the drag force builds up and acceleration dies down over that time. This exercise is extra credit um, and comes from the questions asked about changing acceleration and changing velocity in 2005 M1 on the AP Physics C Mechanics Test. Start by organizing your spreadsheet. If you can see it, if you can find it, you can do it. Have separate columns, and nicely color-coded so you can find them for free fall, where everything is like 11th grade physics, nice and straightforward from last year. And for drag force motion, where you have two forces, one of which changes direction halfway through the problem because it opposes motion, not force. Drag force is down on the way up and up on the way down, unlike gravity, which always goes down. Have a special section with all your constants. Yeah, yeah, I know, 9.81 is 9.81 wherever you go. But you will want to try this at different masses, at different initial heights, and at different initial speeds. And wouldn't it be nice to simply type in that number once, press enter, and have all the different cells magically just change? <laughs> go for it. Start good computer science habits now, and they will serve you well in the future. Also have your original equations ready to hand, and by original I mean the original ones we worked out in 11th grade that still say delta t, but I'm not assuming that we start the stopwatch at zero, because that is the secret of computational physics. Computational physics, right before we get off the train, the calculus stop says if we make this delta t small enough, we can make approximations. Now, set up some kind of initial speed, decide on some sort of random initial height, set your mass as something reasonable, and make a vague sort of guess as to your drag coefficient. Your goal is to make a graph as to what this looks like. Change the drag coefficient, and the dra graph will magically change to show you how greater and lesser air drag works. Let's start with free fall. We know free fall. We're going to have a running time column here. And instead of doing 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 like this, we're going to automate. We're going to start at an initial time, hit equals to show you're doing math. Now, after your first run, it's going to equal your previous cell, do not click on anything else, plus type do not click, delta t. We want an absolute reference, not a relative reference. This delta t up here in H2 is going to stay H2. We do not want it to update and fill. We want it to stay 2. And if we play with our other columns, we want it to stay H. This reference here, this dollar sign here to make this an absolute reference, this one's optional, but the second one is really critical. There. Now, control D to fill that. Isn't that not? You don't have to type all in all those numbers. Fill down wherever you can find in that fill menu. Control D for down. You can find it over here in this little menu. Here it is. Fill down. And you can fill down for as many seconds of data as you want to take. There we go. Now we'll back up to the top where our formulas are. Now we've got time. We know that our velocity should be our initial velocity. Again, make that an absolute reference. Oops, did that right. Notice I'm using my arrow keys. I'm not clicking on anything. Plus our acceleration times time. In this case, our acceleration is going to be negative 9.81, also known as g. So we could do minus 9.81 times time. And we could fill that down and see how our velocity changes. Or over here, we could make another column for g in meters per 
second squared fix those parentheses later make it negative 9.81 or we could make this an absolute reference of our g here times pi. Again, we're going to make this an absolute reference. And we can scroll down. And we can fill all the way down to the end of the sheet where interesting things stop happening. All the way up. There we go. Now for position. We can practice doing this the short way where our position equals our initial position plus our initial velocity times times plus one-half acceleration times times squared. But that's not what the formula actually says. The formula here has delta t. Let's practice doing this as a relative self-reference. Let's do this like an arithmetic sequence. Here we are at line 3.01 seconds. We have our initial displacement, or we just came from this point right here. That was our initial displacement, that's our initial location, plus what was our initial velocity? Here it is. We've just been going 40 meters per second. How long? The biggest tiny little time interval right here. Absolute self-reference. That time interval is not going to change. Notice, clicking right up here, not clicking anywhere else. Now that is going to take us a little farther forward. You know what's going to take us a little further forward? One half times acceleration. That acceleration is not going to change over the course of the problem. It's the only thing that's not going to change. Times, there's our time interval. That's where we're checking in. And we're going to check in at that same time interval every time. Only it's one half a t squared. Ha ha! This is how far we've gone at this velocity. And we can go down. You can see it's rising higher and higher and higher and higher. And we can fill all the way down to the end of the spreadsheet to see aha where does it turn around where does it hit the ground looks like it hits the ground somewhere for 8.62 seconds where does it turn around see going up and up and up well it looks like somewhere here in the 100 and ones wouldn't it be nice to put this on a graph well, let's put this on a graph fastest way to do a chart is just to select everything and let everything else take care of itself. Go to Insert, Chart. You want XY scatter plot, no other option. Otherwise, it will give you a single and a full set of statistics. You want to scatter smooth lines. Hey, look at that. We've got all these things we haven't filled out yet. That's all right. Right click, select data. None of these are filled in. Go away, go away, go away, go away. We'll get there. Ha! We fall Y and free fall velocity. We'll keep both of them for now. We'll sort them into different charts later. There we go. Now, I think 14 is really a little bit over-enthusiastic, so let's format the axes. Let's add some tick marks. I'm fine. Tick marks. Let's make this go only to 12 seconds and not to 14. Microsoft does tend to overshoot. I really don't think we need to go 150 meters below ground level. So let's fix the y-axis as well. Let's only dig ourselves up 15 meters deep, you know, zoom on in on this data a little bit. Ah, there we go. I'll give this um, a title. Watch this. I'm going to make this smaller. Format this. This doesn't need to be so big. It can be just a small can be the vertical, and when we do that, oh, look at that, we can make the graph much bigger. There we go. Now we can read it, maybe put the legend on the side, so 
so we've got a little more room again for our graph. Move this down. Now we will copy this, paste that, and on this one we will take off the velocity and on this one down here we will take off the position and we'll change the title to say help city. Also while we're at it we should change the color to something less ugly. There. That's something more recognizable. Now we are going to have a lovely chart of our free fall, velocity, and position, and we can compare it to what the world is going to look like over here and finally put in the air drag. Our first line here is going to be our initial values. Our initial acceleration is this. Our initial force of gravity is this times that. Now, the force of gravity is the one thing that's not going to change. So we might go keep the same mass, keep the same gravitational field, and fill that down. The difference here is that gravity isn't the only force going on here. There's also a drag force, which depends on the velocity, which depends on the acceleration, which depends on the drag force, and that's why we have this Excel spreadsheet. We start at a known initial height swing. Enter. We start at a known initial speed. Enter. Our initial drag force is going to be both our drag coefficient Time. And now we have a speed, it is our initial speed, and there it is. Now, time to check the direction. We are going up. That means the drag force is going down. That means for the moment, it's going to be negative. Scroll down until you get to the turnaround point. That turnaround point looks like it's right here. Make a color change here. Please note that at this point, we are going to need to change the direction of our drag force. Your new acceleration is your net force divided by your mass. Your velocity is now going to be equal to your initial velocity plus your acceleration times, there is our official check-in window of delta t, make that an reference, and your new drag force will now be your good, old, reliable, absolute reference of B times the ever-changing new velocity. We've done this before. Your previous height plus whatever velocity you were going at the time times your change in time, plus one half of your previous acceleration, times your time interval squared. Please note that not only this is an absolute reference to delta t as always, but all of you, look at the colors, you are using your previous height, your initial velocity, your initial acceleration, all relative to this point, your old line, for 0.01 seconds to give you your new line. Don't use new line materials, they are instantaneous. You are assuming that not much has changed in the past 0.01 seconds. You're ready to check your velocity here. Make sure your drag force is negative B times V. And with that, you can fill down all the way down. See what happens toward the end of the problem. And please note that if you've done your negatives correctly, that drag force will change direction all on its own. Notice you've got downward velocity. The drag force has already been going up. Draw these numbers on a graph, and good luck.